in all the world there is a sea, in all the sea there is an island, in all the island there is a county, and in that county there is a townland of Ankara, situated at the edge of Ulster and Leinster provinces, and the borders of County Cavan and County Me, surrounded by myths and legends. It is here that you'll find Celtic myths, the art of Irish lore, which is the art studio of Irish artist Margaret McKenna. Come on in, here. Paris, Jack. Come on in. Hi, can't. What am I get? Just doing the tattoo. Ah, tongue on. Uh, I'm good. Hold on, Thank you. So, yeah. Hi. This is it. Yeah, it's me. This is your tattoo. Say sure. I'm not much. Hold on, there. Well, I'm painting uh, today a, a picture of Cairn L up in Loch Crew which is just across the road from me. Um, a place that's very dear to my heart, a place I've painted many a time, but I've never painted from this angle, and I'm going to turn it into something else later on. So I'm going to get the basics sort of done today. Um, art is, I mean, this is just, it's just a passion of mine, this whole place, but not just that paint place, but the how to how to express, um, how to express that my, my love of the place is through my art. And not just, ha not just the place, but the story behind the place. I think art, like, since I was only a child, art is, it's been so central to my life. Um, my mom said that before I could draw, or before I could um, walk or talk, I was drawing. And I literally, and that's not, that's not an exaggeration, I went through reams of paper when I was a kid. And my mom, being an artist herself, she really encouraged it. And um, even if it drove her mad, me having to get all the paper every five minutes. But I loved the idea of the storytelling. Even when I was a child, I would do lots of uh, stories on my, um, you know, be like stories about, you know, adventures and, and, and what kids were doing, comic books I used to make. Um, it was, so it was always about the story. And again, now when I'm doing my art, it's, it's the story behind the place is what I love. The idea that there's, that there's something more to it than just the painting. So initially it used to be like trying to get the atmosphere of a painting. So it was a really stormy sea, I'd like to get that drama or, so what is it behind the painting? Um, and then later on, I started to become more interested in well, I was always actually, I was always interested in our old Celtic myths. That's something that I've always been interested in since I was a young at school. Um, I used to draw them um, at home. And then even in college, I remember doing a project and, and had, using Finn McCool and Cochulain and all the characters and, and doing how I said like a, like a little illustration book about it. And um, I was in the College of Art. My dad used to bring us down, and my mum, of course. But it was hid outside was more, he was very interested in the history and all that stuff. So we'd go on holidays, we'd always go down to places like castles and stone circles and things like that, as well as, of course, the amusements and everything like that too. Obviously, we were we like those kind of things too, obviously. But we we love we did actually enjoy the history part um, on some level. We just enjoy the old the old places. So I think that's always been um, there for me. And then I moved down here to Cavan, and just on the border of County Meath, and I realised that right across the fields from me was. Um, was, Cairn, was the Cairns. And actually, I'd never heard of Loch Crew. I mean, I'd been to Newgrange, I'd been to so many places, but I'd actually never heard of Loch Crew. And I couldn't believe it when I heard about the story of the Caliach and, and just um, the, how ancient it was and the whole, the equinox. And and, and since then, I've painted the, this area so much, many times because every time I look over the, across the fields, the light is so different. If it's summertime, it's different. If it's um, compared to the snow, compared to the frost, um, sunset, sunrise, middle of the day, dull days, the light, the clouds just change the whole light of the place. So never mind about the fact that the story, the, the landscape itself is beautiful, but then on top of that you've got the extra ancient part of it, which is the, the story of the Kaliach, the story of um, our ancestors, how they had this sort of calendar that was 5,500 years old, telling us when the equinox was, when the night and day were equal. And um, I've been up there many a time to see the sunrise in the, in the chamber, and it's just you know, you're just so connected with it when it happens. So this kind of love of places like that is just, I just express through the my art. Um, I say I usually start with the basics of a, like here for example today, I have an actual picture on my phone that I've taken from the other day and I, and I refer to it every now and again to get the general shape. And then what I do is I'll actually add, and add bits and change bits as I go along. So this is just a basic, a basic one. And it could look completely different by the time I'm finished. <laughs> because it's only, I block it in first, get the general basic, what you say to all my class, because I do teach here as well. This is my cabin. 
Um, I built this uh, five years ago. Um, it was being sold as a, um, in County Mayo. Um, just an architect had used it, and um, I, we decided we'd get it. So I literally numbered every piece of wood, and it was literally, I could say, almost dumped on the garden like a big giant jigsaw. Which so it was as well as um, being exciting in terms of um, having a new place to do my art with my students and my own, my own art. It was also a great opportunity to um, to learn how to just uh, things like slating and how to put things together. So it was quite exciting. Um, certainly, it's it's become a real little haven for people. That I've had people come back here for years now, and also then my own space uh, in between the classes. It's like this is where I come and I just tune out and I think about what I'm going to do next and I use it for my all my Celtic myths. Yeah, so I mean, this is what I, I like to add in. The idea now with this is that I'll hopefully add in, um, I, I'm actually, this is quite fluid at the moment, so I'll, I'll see where this is going to go. Um, this will be a little adventure. So I'm just going to get the basics of what's what's on the hill, first of all. So we've got the, the hills here and we've got the, we've got the, you've just got to look at this now. Yeah, a little bit of the, the markings of where the hedgerows are and I just this is how rough I do it initially and I often because people often think oh in the classes they have to do it really detailed oh I made a mistake here and then I said no you're only starting it off so relax you know just see what happens because it's you know this is just a rough part it can look like an abstract at this stage you know you know where you're going and that's it that's the main thing and um, because the main thing about art is, is to enjoy it and um, I'm not one of the artists who these sort of and it's funny because when I was little, I remember when I used to be drawing characters and they'd be doing something like something adventurous or something. And Mam used to say to me, she said, you'd know that these kids are doing that because you said, all you have to do is look at your face. You're living that. She said, you're living what they're doing. And I mean, obviously I don't be looking at myself when I'm drawing, so I don't know. But if I'm doing something that's, um, you know, you're getting in behind the story, I suppose it, you're actually putting a lot of yourself into, into the picture. I suppose it's like, it's almost like I suppose if you're creating a, a drama or something like I suppose it's the same for a director in a play they want to get across a meaning they kind of put a lot of themselves into it um, and I think that's the same with with the art you're putting your, yourself into the story as to how you feel your interpretation which is so important um, and then hopefully the people then will pick up on that and be inspired themselves you know to even visit these places as well because there's so much in our history and so much in our in our heritage that we we kind of look at we just literally walk on top of every day and especially with our place names which is my new passion now is to see the meanings behind our place names there's so many stories in there that we don't even um, we can't we, we know are forgotten and we just take them for granted so we're like we're living in history as it were living in an, an ancestral place no matter where you are in the Ireland especially but I'm sure not just in Ireland in other places too but it's just that people we're quite more. I think we're more connected with it here in some ways. Um, I think we sh certainly we should be, and um, yeah, that's what my. So I'm hoping that when I do these paintings, that this is what um, I get across. That it's it's that idea that we're li This is our place. This is our where we live, and these stories are really a part of who we are. Well, Hussey may um er do son Dean Glass, egg Fallum Grailga Rish, Agus um like Fallum down a mayor skull, um um Ach um Rinami Jarma dear for this moment in Tonga. Um Ach um nor nor not well me a gober, um Hussey may er rash or Nidaline, Agus Hussey may er Julingo er dus, Agus on chin in the ishin um a crystal er rangana um Gach Shachtan, August Tommy, Janie Beads, Free Lawhar. Ah, this, um, sort of Duskal Shay, 
Duskalon Tanga Mahula Mayal air on Nath on Tanga Dither on Naluga and like August on Star, August on Mitsoli Octaves and Velidis, August on Severus of Tion, August Marshin is a Tosim Morgum Sanavashin Pilahar, August Tommy Egg Egg Jane of Uber. Fui la hora de school, el de grade school, con de muy nechón, agus fui en el lugar en el que se nos hicieron, agus tosis en el suelo, agus pechí que junta, mar, you know, ta an, fue el de los viejos no caíche, you know, an 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 que anda de en el lugar en el que, agus con ese leery en 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 anum, en anum que, an 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 star, agus nes nescaleti, nescaleti ta you know, you know, on fui 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 our 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 gusa, you know, fui our gusa, you know. I guess Tashi Shin gahunta. I mean, Neil McGregor gahunta. Ag Tashi ane ane nis far na ve she. Tashi nis far na ve she kuplebliano hin. Our history and our mythology and our folklore and to the language and with with the place names or the lugar nam nakas to say as well get in Irish. And it's just so. It's so strong. I mean, we're literally walking on history, walking on mythology. We don't realize it. Um, I mean, across the fields from me, I mentioned uh, the uh, Sleeve Nikali, which is called Sleeve Nikali in English. It's actually called Sleeve Nikali, which of course is the hill of the witch or the Kaliak, the hill of the ancient goddess. And I mean, people say it every day and they don't even realize what they're talking about. So it's, it's this just one instance. Um, Everywhere around the country, we've just got so much, um, so much um, history and mythology beneath our feet, and the Irish language just really brings this out. It's because the names were changed during, you know, hundreds of years of of, um, of, of uh, occupation, and then of course during, um, I think it was the surveys of the 19th century, really, when um, they surveyed the land and they wrote them down to, sort of that would suit an English ear. So naturally, this, they didn't even translate them; they were just put down and sort of made nonsense. Um, it doesn't even make sense. And unfortunately, it's meant that the, the wonderful stories behind them are, are not nearly lost. But they're so interesting, and I think when people actually become, when people actually open their eyes and realise, they think, "Oh my God, that's really interesting." You know, they say, "Wow, I never knew that about where I live." You know, that that's connected to a mythology, mythological character like Cullen or Finn McCool, or you know, I never realised that. Or and it's just, it's it's fascinating. Like it really is. It's just, you know, it's not. We're we're, we're very lucky to be honest to live in in a country where literally the names of places are you know i was talking about one recently there and it was the county of armagh for example and it's ard macha which is the heights of macha and macha being an ancient goddess i mean where do you get a counties in a country that are called after an ancient deity i mean very rarely um and ireland itself eru you know the goddess eru ireland era is is, is connected to eru the goddess um who was asked to be her the the country would be named after her and surely it was um, so I mean we're very lucky in that regard and I think the Irish language to me now has really started to um, to, to put that into into the sort of, you know right focus my focus now is on that in that area now and yeah the classes I do uh, throughout the week I do um, a one on a Monday and I do them on um, Thursday and a Saturday as well I do adults and children that's in my in my cabin and then I also do classes in the community as well um, I do classes for the educational training board in different, again, community classes um, in Cavan and in Monaghan, and I work with schools on another program as well. So, um, yeah, I'm fairly fairly full up at the moment with classes most days, um, and sometimes a few classes a day, and then might have one day that's free. Um, but yeah, it's a very casual kind of class. Most of the people who come, um, the classes in the community sometimes they are um, teaching classes such like I bring a subject I bring say okay for example we do this and we start from scratch and I'll, sh I'll, I'll sh work them through it and what I'm doing and um, other times then it's it's a more in here it's mostly a class that they just go and do their own thing and I'm there to advise them and you know say you know just give them a few tips along the way some people you know look for more help than others and some of them are more just you know get the odd little query now and again they don't really they're quite happy to work away themselves. And of course, people also come for the, for the chat as well. I think that's as, as important as anything else. They have a cup of tea in the break and, you know, and a few sweets or a few, I mean, cakes or something like that and biscuits and that and then, and, and, the, and the little chat. And, the, and they love that part. I mean, you know, every bit as much as they, as they enjoy the painting. But they do. Yeah. So they, they, they really, they're, they're enjoyable to do because you get to know people as well. It's amazing, you people coming back for years and years. I've known people. When I started, to, I might have started off with them in a different place, 
you know, in a community setting, being hired like to do it, and then next thing is they're coming back to me, myself doing the classes, and um, as well because you can go off into your own little world then and do do what what they're doing, which is to, which is what I like to do as well, um, when I get the time to do that. Um. Margaret McKenna draws her inspiration from the spirits and energy of this unique location that overlooks the ancient sites of Loch Cru, Agus, Slavnakali, the Lake of the Tree, and the Hills of the Witch. These megalithic sites are over 5,000 years old, and many are decorated with rare Neolithic art. And even though she can see the sites from her window, she prefers to personally visit them on a regular basis, where she can see and feel the energy, and listen to the land and wind speak. You can see and feel it in her creations as she honors the flow and respects all that was before. Here we I had you know the one of the um the one that's in the that's it there. And, uh, the, and you see you're looking back up but I put the moon in it or whatever. Um, oh yeah, I can't it. And you can see it's used, it has the little offerings on it. now as it used to be because people are more inclined to go up the other way. Um, and you can look back when we get up the slope we can see better. Well if we go up the slope you can see Cairnell across the way. here that you don't you know when you come up here there's something about this place you can see nearly quite they chose it hi definitely and this is the I say where the Kalia was said to have dropped her stones from her apron oh. a bit mucky just there hi well other than that it's not really see it's not really mucky up here generally it's just hi. you know it's just really just ground and the sheep keep the, the grass short and long down here. Well, it's nice of them to do that for Isn't us. Isn't it nice? Yeah, I think it is very thoughtful. It's a thoughtful eye. And this is Cairn S. Cairn S, T, U and V all together, T being the main, the main Cairn. Oh, so Cairn S. They as do it after As in Saoirse. As in Saoirse, yes. Yeah, yeah, so there we go. Cairn here. Aye, so, um, yeah, so how often they come up here and... Oh, um, I come up, well, I can go through, I was only up here earlier on uh, about a couple of days ago, and then I think it was up about a week before that or so, and then I might go for a month, and then I could go three times in a week. Aye. You know, um, but I see it every day from my house. Ah. I can see it from the window. I can Grand. see this cairn here. So uh, it's, it's so it's kind of like so much a part of. It. I can't avoid it, really, you know. If I'm looking from a distance or I'm up here, and it's just today's really calm, Aye. so it's really nice. I'm not very crowded either. It's not. No, there's a few people actually. There's a few people here. Outside. There's artwork in cairn, in cairn. T and U. There's a nice lot of artwork you can climb into. Art right. You see the artwork up here. The Kalyak's chair, the wishing chair, the witch's chair, the hag's chair. There's a whole lot of names to it. The Kahir Kalyak. 
Cathar Cala. Cathar Cala. Yeah. Oscar Elge, yeah. in Irish, and it's where she said to have sat and overlooked the land. Aye. And it is. It's got a. It's obviously some. We don't know exactly what it's for. Some maybe some sort of altar. It's got a. There is artwork here besides the actual graffiti, which is probably a few hundred years old itself. But we can't. It's so. You can see it there. Look, you can see some of the, the indents. Look there. This, this, you know, the, the, they have the. Round it a bit more. That's good. Busy. That's that's still there. But right. You can't see it. You'd want to take a rubbing of it to see it. Um, right. Well. And so you can see the quartz. Do you see the quartz oh, yeah. in places? Quartz this would have been Kenya. covered in yeah, quartz. Yeah. Yeah. Quartz What is it? Quartz yeah. yeah. The sunstones. Oh, is it? Oh. So, but I like the, this. I I always wondered to see this up close here. If it was a, a feature that was natural or it was made. Yeah. It looks almost. Like it's made. It is made, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it is made. I so think. it's there for a purpose, but we don't remember yeah. what it is for sure. It's definitely, it's definitely, it was something. If you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was done. It wasn't just. It's too pronounced compared to all the other rocks, and even the way that it's built in. At this, you know, it's just not the same as the other stones at uh, the edges at all. Exactly. Um, and this here, we'll just go down maybe to this one here because this okay. is artwork in this one. This is Karen. Okay. Uh, well, then we can look at the, at the actual chair or the the entrance. I mean. What I find interesting is these these ridges too. They see the way they radiate out from the top, and they go all down. There's one here, one there, one on the far side, and one on the other side as well. This is uh, Patrick's town here. Okay. And that is where it said the Kalia fell to her death. Uh, and she's, there was cairns up there, but they're destroyed. You can, there's another route up to the back of it as well. Why are they destroyed on this touch of fossa? A lot of the cairns, they say, around this area were actually um, used to make walls. If you notice the real stone walls all the way up, it's more like going in through Galway, the west of Ireland. A lot of them say that this whole place was full of cairns, uh, and a lot of the cairns were destroyed to make walls. Look at you, you're like you live here or something. <laughs> My little home. Uh, is your home away from home, is Look it? Look at this. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Isn't it? It is. Photograph ourselves together. Can I get a, a, yeah, a little selfie it. here? <laughs> Look at me <laughs> paint on my hands. I know. <laughs> so I was watching my that life. when you were painting. I sure I'd be full of paint. You yeah. know? I wondered how how messy a painter you really were. I'm a very messy painter. Okay. I, all my clothes have got paint on them. Kids to give out to me. I mean, you're not wearing that. Can, you, can you see? There's some wonderful artwork in here. Stone here. Okay. Hi. Some of. There we go. <laughs> These. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Come on this way with the artwork, maybe somehow, or that one, whichever. Let's get some pictures again, as always. Yeah. I never get, I never get tired of taking pictures of That's this. That's it. Stuff. Well, you can send that one to me. Well, she must get some. Oh, sorry. There you go. So, anyway, so this is. Uh, this is Cairn M um, U. Yeah, yeah. And as you can see, there's some really good examples of the artwork here. The, I know, they're still like concentric. Uh, Circle there, you know, lines here. Um, not exactly spirals because they're more like circular and they're just coming out further out, but not a full circle either. And you see it on both sides here. Um, there's some more on this wall again as well. I get a picture. You can of that see one, there's you? a good one. That's actually a really good one because uh, you can actually see a, a slight design. You can see this almost like a, like, uh, yeah, like oh, a that's flower. A lovely one, yeah, yeah. Uh,
Margaret McKenna has a love for the Irish language, Gaelic, and the mythic tales and legends of our past. All of these have a profound influence on her projects and her art. When you look at her paintings, it's as if they call out to you and invite you inside to the land of Tiernanog and all the heroes of old. Margaret's art is magical. It will touch your soul and free your spirit. <laughs>